Hi, everybody. Long time, no talk, I guess. Um, we know how chatting human design works. I put them out when people ask to be on. I wait for the invitation in the most literal sense. And I got one. And it's Allie, everybody. Yay! Hi, Allie. Hello. Allie is a 3-5 self-projected projector. I don't even know if I've had a self-projected projector on the podcast. I have to look back, but she's a rare one, um, which is really fun. And she's a Reiki master, energy healer, uh, teacher, all kinds of stuff. She's a guide from the side, just like me. So thanks for coming on, Allie. Thanks for having me and accepting my invite. Oh, you're welcome. I love it when people send me stuff. I'm like, oh, yes, I can accept this invitation because chatting human design is very easy for me to accept the invite. If you have heard of human design in a very even surface sense, I'm like, yes, come on and let's talk. I am um, learning all about it. So I am in the surface sense and it has been it. incredible. But that's what I love because then I can tell you stuff and you're like, oh, and you've never heard it. And usually I'm just talking about it, stuff with my friends and they tell me things. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> because one of my friends is a, was a one three. So she's very, she studies everything and she just keeps it, retains it so well. And she'll just throw stuff in. I'm like, hey, I don't remember that part. <laughs> that's new. Uh, yeah. She's getting, neat. she's getting divine download. She's adding to the to the teaching material. I bet. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's, it's fun. Cause I, when I, she tells me stuff, I usually retain it much better than if I would have tried to read it or study it on my own. So one, three, three, six profile. That's just kind of how it goes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and, and who you are and how you like to spend your time? I am Allie. I own Energy with Allie and I help healers activate their healing gifts through Reiki certifications so they can create quantum leaps in their impact because humanity is in a mental health crisis and it is mm -hmm. time for us to heal for our health. The word heal is in health. So that's what we do. We remove blockages in the body and infuse those holes with high frequency light. So the energy can flow freely, which is needed for our well being. So that's what I do in a nutshell. I spend my time with my children. I have mm -hmm. a five and a six year old now. Wow. And yes, yeah, so I'm very busy. Yeah. We are in dance and t-ball right now and mm. we meditate together. We love meditation and yoga. Oh, I love that for you and your kids. That's really good that you're teaching that kind of stuff because kids really have no idea about anxiety. And I was born in, I grew up in the eighties. Nobody told you any of that stuff. Like I was an anxious kid and everybody was just like, well, calm down. You're just weird. Like, yeah, relax. It's like, exactly. they don't give you any tools. No, and I didn't even know what an, an emotion was. I didn't even yeah. know what that was. Yeah. And you're giving your kids tools at five and six years of age and telling them that this is not only normal, it's awesome so that they will hold on to these for their whole lives. And it probably is going to help them mentally. I love, sorry, I get like, I don't want kids and I don't like children most of the time. Not like I'm a monster, but I'm just going to put that out there. But when <laughs> I see people who want kids and love their kids and are enjoying being parents doing cool shit like you are doing. Hmm. Like when I see people teaching their kids about human design, I'm like, Oh my God, I just start crying. <laughs> Cause I think about how much that would have helped me when I was a child. And I'm like, Oh, your kid is like, doesn't even realize it. Like you're, you're really helping them out. And it's so neat. So good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I am the person that I needed when I was a child for sure. Yeah. And that's got to feel really nice to do for your own kids. It is. It is. And all of our children deserve this. So yeah, I hope I can reach more kids in the future and maybe my kids will help reach more kids. Who knows? But yeah. at least I can instill breathing techniques and, yeah. you know, releasing the resistance in the mind a little bit, just to let them know that emotions are a good thing to feel like welcome to being human. Yay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to experience every single human emotion in this life. And that's mm -hmm. such a gift that we mm -hmm. get to do that. 
Yeah, instead of trying to run away or avoid, because that's what I did. I was like, oh, all that stuff's, I don't need that. Get out of here. And Mm -hmm. it's not very helpful because it doesn't just go away. It just pops up in weird random spots, especially when you're a child and then you're having a tantrum for no reason or like you're, you know, you just can't function because you're overwhelmed. Your system is overwhelmed and no one really tells you that that happens. It happens to adults too. (laughs) And sometimes you just need a break. You do. Yeah. And then it, it bottles up, you suppress it for long enough and then it blows up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I was a big reader as a kid that I think that helped me because I could go in my room and close the door and read a book and no one would bother me. And it's like alone time disguised as, Oh, Janelle's reading a book. That's such a, you know, great hobby that she has. I mean, I did read all of the babysitters club books multiple times, but Oh, a lot the of times I just, club. A lot of times I just sit in there by myself. Those are my favorite. Oh God, I love those. I'm kind of bummed out days. because I remember like, God, probably like 10 years ago, maybe more. My mom had a like a garbage bag full full of my babysitters club books. I didn't know she had kept them. And I was like, what do you have these for? And I made her get rid of them because it was just a bag of old books. And now I'm like so mad. <laughs> I was like, I wish I would have kept like at least one just to be like, oh, babysitter's club, but oh, well. Those I mean, are collectors. I know. I mean, they were ratted and tatted, man, ripped up. And I read through those things. We donated them, but like, I don't know. I was like, mom, get rid of it. And then I'm like, crap. I had her get rid of all my yearbooks too. I went through like this phase of like, get rid of all of my shit. And then yeah. she passed like seven years ago. And I was like, when I have it, I was like, ah, I kind of wish I wouldn't have had her get rid of all my shit. Yes. I mean, it's not like, I'm not like heartbroken or anything, but sometimes I'm like, oh, that would have been neat to have at least one of them, but oh, well. It's exactly. Tough. To have that energy around. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I fully get it. Yeah. And I love that you were able to find an outlet to process your emotions because with my kids, that's what I do. I will say you can go to your room, have alone time, process your emotions. And a lot of times they'll just put themselves in their room to process their emotions. Because when I have babysitters and stuff helping that, helping me, like I do now, my kids aren't here. They don't feel safe processing their emotions with everyone. So they need that time to decompress Mm -hmm. once they get home. Oh, that's so great. Well, I love that you, that you do that with them. Um, How did you find human design? Where did it come from for you? Oh, okay. Well, this is a long story and I'm going to make it very, very short. I was once in corporate America, climbing the corporate ladder, Mm -hmm. getting wined and dined. And I had the money and the friends and the success and the cars and the houses and all of the things, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling so disconnected from myself and my career. And as a result, I became overwhelmed, unfulfilled, and burnt out. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in my cubicle and I was like, I cannot feel like this anymore. I felt like, can I swear on this? Of course. Okay. I felt like shit. And I realized (laughs) I cannot... (laughs) I realized I couldn't keep feeling like shit and I couldn't keep working a job I didn't feel aligned with. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was full of disease. I was diagnosed with endometriosis Mm -hmm. and I was told that I would never be able to have kids. I was infertile. Yeah. And I'm just started bawling because I I feel like you have this burning desire, whether you want to be a parent or not. And you just kind of know And I knew that I was here to be a mom and I was here to guide children. Mm -hmm. And so I made up my mind in that moment that my husband and I would adopt. And 10 days later, we conceived our first child naturally out of nowhere. Where are these, what are these doctors talking about then? That's so crazy to tell you that and like crush your whole hopes and dreams. Yes. And what they said is there's scar tissue all over my uterus. So was, there was nowhere for the egg to attach. Well, it somehow did. <laughs> it did. And so I tell you this because this was my first realization that something beyond the physical body was at play. And mm-hmm. I began to get curious about life. Mm-hmm. So three months later, my child was born and we survived a house fire. We lost everything. 
And I'm the first child in my family. My husband's the first child in his family. So we had a lot of inheritance and it was all gone. I, we all got out of the house. Luckily, uh, I didn't have a blanket for my baby. I didn't have shoes on my feet. It was in the thick of November in Michigan. So there's snow on the ground. Didn't own a single thing. We just watched our house burn. And I remember crashing at a neighbor's house looking at my husband and my baby while we were sleeping. And I realized in that moment that I didn't lose anything, even though I had lost everything physical, Mm -hmm. like I had everything, all that mattered was their health and their well being. Yeah. And I'm also a Taurus. I know this is a human design podcast, but it's okay. I'm a Taurus rising. I love Taurus. Yeah. I actually identify a little bit more with Taurus than I do Scorpio, which is my son, because Scorpio feels like very intense. And I don't know if I feel that intense, (laughs) but Taurus, I'm like, yeah, I can roll with that. (laughs) You give me total Taurus vibes. Taurus rising. So that makes sense. (laughs) Yes. And we're very grounded individuals. We like to manifest material things and So that was a lot for me to lose Mm -hmm. everything material. Mm -hmm. I had to, I mean, I had a death. Yeah, Taurus really likes material comforts and to just take them all away, like rip them from you. That's very discombobulating. It was. I felt completely dispersed, completely displaced. And I looked at my child and I was like, how am I going to guide her to a happy and abundant life? If I couldn't live one myself, there's a spider. I don't know the spiritual meaning of a spider, but I see it. Oh, I don't know either, <laughs> but we'll look it up after this. You're so funny. Um, and so I was like, I have to guide her to this happy, abundant life. And I knew that I could only do that by embodying it. And that's mm-hmm. part of being a projector. Yeah. So I took a manifestation class. And in that manifestation class, it was called fuel my soul by Courtney King. I learned the first test that she had me do was pull my human design chart. And that's when I found oh, wow. out I was a projector and a three, five profile. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, it made total sense because I knew I absorbed a lot of energy. I knew I didn't have like that abundance of energy, like everyone else, like you see, in, I don't know if it's generators or manifesting generators. You'll both. have to, both. they okay. both have sacral motors. It's the motor for life. It is essentially a battery. So they wear it out during the day, they sleep and it charges itself back up to hundred and they do it all again. We don't ever get charged to hundred. We, we, we vary day by day, week by week. So we can sleep yeah. and we can get great sleep and still be tired. We can work one day a week and still be exhausted. This is things that I've learned from cutting down my schedule and really trying to like fine tune how I live. I work three days a week at a restaurant and I might as well be there every single day because it takes that long for me to like recover. And I was for a while, I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, this is, this can't be happening. I mean, I'm almost 40. So I was like, okay, I'm getting old, but still one day at work. And I'm like, my legs feel like cement and I don't, and I couldn't, I was like, I don't know why this is. And I, and I've been realizing it's because I've been turning so much more into this, this stuff, the inner work, what I'm here to do, like all the guidance and all the things. So all that is like extra loud and extra crappy in my body. Cause I can like really feel it. It's like glaring at me and I don't like it, but I, I, I'd rather be here and see this because I know that's it's separating and that's what's happening but it still is can be really jarring it can be yeah. and I feel you 100 percent because I am like how are these people so energized and like it's very full yeah and I I always thought something was wrong with me because I am always exhausted mm-hmm. so I have found something to help me, especially as I am in a, a CEO and owner, as I am uh, managing people. And there's a lot that goes into it. And with the human elements, like even creating a landing page for one of my courses, that takes a lot of energy out of mm-hmm. me. It oh, does. Yeah. I agree. I'm like, this is not for me. And that's because it's not. So 
one thing I've done is I've outsourced those tasks that manifesting generators. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And truly it will change your life because even like reaching out to you outreach PR outreach, I am one that has to wait for the invite. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if I have a man manifesting generator behind that energy, somebody is more apt to accept the invite. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah. That's, that's probably true. It is. <laughs> You're like, it is. It's been working. <laughs> ha -ha. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Yay, it is why she's here. Um, I love that. And that's a huge thing for non-energy types. So projectors, reflectors, manifestors is to outsource stuff when you can. And even if like me, it's not in like your budget to outsource to pe professionals, outsource to the people in your life that are willing to help you out. Like my husband will do stuff for me. My sister-in-law mm -hmm. will do stuff for me. Like other people will do one-off stuff for me if I ask them because I'm not like bugging them all the time because I hate asking for help. So <laughs> when I do it a little at a time, I realize exactly what you said. It's like, oh, even if it's something small like the dishes and you were like, oh, I don't want to do the dishes. And my husband will go, I'll do it. I'm like, yes. And I could go sit on the couch while you do the dishes. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. seem like a big deal, but energetically it really like, you're like, oh, cool. You weight off your that. shoulders. Yeah. And that's a big thing for projectors to realize is that you're not overreacting. You're not melodramatic if you're exhausted or if something just, you can't muster up the energy to do something consistently. It's part of your energetic, energetic makeup to really not be about that. So cut right. yourself some slack when you can and give yourself breaks and stuff when you can and take stuff off your list that aren't as important as you think they are. Get really good at prioritizing. Just like you said, when you lost everything and you look at your family, you're like, well, I still have everything I need. Look at your list of, of tasks for the day and go, is this really important? Or can I move that till tomorrow? Like, yeah, cut your list. Okay. You want to know how list. freeing it was, how freeing it was to lose everything as it was one of the most traumatic events of my life Yeah, outside of grieving the loss of one of my loved ones. Mm -hmm. However, it was one of the most freeing times of my life because all of that baggage was just gone. Yeah. Like lifted. Yeah, it was it burnt to ashes and it created space for me to rebuild literally the, my life, the way I wanted to create it versus how society wanted me to live, which is mm -hmm. the life that I had co-created before the fire. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so clear your list clear and your rebuild. List. Yeah. Yeah, I looked up build. spiders. You want to hear about spiders? <gasps> I do. <laughs> spiders may symbolize balance, creativity, curiosity, personal growth, and self-awareness. Oh, that's cool. Self-awareness hit home. Yeah. yeah, right? That's a good one. I love that. Um, so what I know you're you're you you are a Reiki master, so I'm sure you do a lot of Reiki. What else do you do to like protect your energy from? people or a lot of times for me, I have to, I collect a lot of people's energy throughout the day and I have to release it. And so that from walking outside helps me a lot or just being by myself can really help that happen. But I know, especially for you, because you're a fifth mm -hmm. line, you kind of have to have some sort of protection already there. Like always, hey, I'm ready. <laughs> so how always. do you do that? And I am working with clients one-on-one. -on -one, so I'm constantly interacting with people's energy bodies and I have mm -hmm. to create consciously create a space in between us. So what I do is I wake up every day and I ground, I imagine roots growing from the base of my spine down to the center core of the earth. And I tether, I anchor into that core. And then I think of one thing that I'm so grateful for. And as we know, everything is energy. Even this table in front of me, it in its smallest particle is energy. So this love is just a quicker, faster, higher vibrational energy that I'm creating by thinking of just one thing, like the birds chirping outside that I'm grateful for. And I expand that love all around me and I seal it off with this steel egg. So I'm a very visual person mm -hmm. and I will seal this love with steel. There's nothing that can penetrate this egg. 
Um, if we get really esoteric, I even seal it with mirrors because there are something called entities in the world. And when you're working on people's energy bodies, those entities can attach to me, my energy body. If I'm not fully protected with mirrors, they run away scared. They can't look at themselves again, take or leave that. I understand that's very esoteric. Hey, there's parts to of that that totally makes sense because in human design, we talk about it very similarly, how even if you leave the person, if you have an, especially if you have an undefined social solar plexus, like you do, we take their stuff with us. It sticks to us. It's sticky. It is. It's, it's like a sludge. It. It's hard mm-hmm. to get it to go away. So when, now I'm picturing like little sludge monsters and I'm mirroring yeah. them. So I totally love that. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's, I feel like it's very, it's just a different way to say certain things that we, that we, I understand as well. So yeah. Yeah. And design other people's stuff sticks with you. And that's why a lot of times you have to release it. Um, so that totally exactly. makes sense. Even if they're if gone. I will. Mm-hmm. And it can Always. be days. It can be days. And you're like, why do I still have this? Ugh. Because that's what happens. And maybe you haven't done anything to allow it to, to leave your body. You have to consciously tell it to leave as a projector because that you are you do, so you protect so you protect but how if you if because stuff, stuff's going to get in like that's just what yeah happen. how Absolutely. do you like get it out <laughs> i learned a prayer from sharma palay she is a thought leader in the spiritual community she does protection for a lot of the uh very well-known thought leaders in the spiritual community so she is a very reliable source her name is sharma palay And she's an entity removalist and she taught me to, yeah, she was one of the, she like rocked my world, uh, one-on-one with her. So she taught me this technique and it's just a simple prayer. And our intention is everything. Our, our our intention is done as soon as we say it and we have Mm -hmm. to feel it. We can't just say it because the universe speaks to you in feeling versus words. So the the feeling behind your words is everything. So I say, please remove all negative energies and entities or all external energies and entities, depending on the day and what I want to, you can just say both. So I remove all negative and external energies and entities in their entirety from my space, send them back to God source light for deep love and healing for the good of all involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is done. And you can call upon any higher power that you resonate with before saying that prayer that also will give it a little bit more boost Mm -hmm. and they're gone. They're away. And I say this in the morning at lunch and in the evening, just because some of my loved ones do have entities on them. And I can see them now as you step into Reiki healing in your spiritual gifts, you become clairvoyant and clearer audience and clearer sentient and clearer cognizance and all of these senses that we're born with, but are kind of, you can't see them. So we are told not to believe them. You reactivate them. So I now can see entities on people. So I have to say that prayer continuously saying, go back to God's source light while I'm in the room. They'll always come back to that person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so cool because I'm looking at your chart as you're saying this and the spleen is the center of like intuition and all the stuff you're talking about. There are particular gates that connect to clairvoyance and like uh, intuitive smell and all these other things. And you, yeah, I have the gate for intuitive smell, which is like, it's almost like when people talk about the weather change and how they can smell it, it's kind of like that, but it's an energetic change that it almost just feels like a deep, for me, it feels like it's like a depressurizing in my nose, but I also have a very sensitive sense of smell. Like I don't, I can't hang with bad smell. Like I get freaked out. I have to open windows. I'm like, shot. I can't breathe. I need air. Yeah. This stuff going on. I'm like, don't you smell that? He's like, no, I don't smell anything. And I'm like, well, you don't have this. So, so that is one of the ones that I have. And it's really cool because you are completely open in the spleen. You have no defined gates. And when a center is completely open like this, you have the capacity to become the most wise and to hold the most space for others in this energy. So intuitively, 
the spleen is intuition, fear, survival, and timing. So yeah. you have the ability to become really wise at holding space for other people in that regard. So you, even though you have no definition in your spleen, you are here to be the most intuitive. <laughs> like yes. it's kind of neat that that's what you're, you're here for, because a lot of people will look at the center and go, there's nothing going on. I'm like, I know you're why you're here to experience all the stuff intuitively and become really wise about it and go, okay, I'm, I've experienced this. I've experienced this. I can hold space for you here. I got this here. Like all the stuff you're talking about, the clairvoyance, the clairsentience, all that stuff, you have the capacity to hold space for people who are work experimenting with that, who yeah. don't or like, what the hell is this? This is weird. You're like, okay, I'm here when you're ready. I'm here to, for it. <laughs> yeah. When you're ready to experience it. So like, yeah. Anyway. And it, it is this heightened level of sensitivity, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And we oh, almost, yeah. and we almost need that in order to guide our environment when the invite is there. Yeah. And, and it, we have to, we have to have that sensitivity in order to know, like you said, the divine timing is the invite there are the ingredients, right? It is an mm-hmm. art as a projector. Yeah. yeah. And when it's an open center, you learn this stuff. It's not like you just automatically were wise about things. You picked the stuff up. Like you didn't you just, do. you fell into it because you learned, you, you experienced a lot of things, very third line of you to do this, but that's how you become wise. So that's why it can feel messy when you have an open center and you're working with it you're like ah like for me the the emotional center was hard because I was just so jacked up about how I treated emotions but then mm-hmm. I realized how to do it and now I realize I'm actually really good at holding space for people who are going through emotional things I don't I thought I would fall apart like I can't be around people who are going to be emotional I'm going to freak out but now I realize hey I can, I can, I feel strong. Like I sit there and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm physically holding a space for them. And I'm like, you have, you hold it. You got this. It's and like, you do it with it takes, love. Yeah. But it does take energy. It's not like it's just happens. Like you have to energetically focus on it. And then when it's done, you are tired. <laughs> you are. Yeah. And this is a technique that I started utilizing because I was feeling so drained after healings. I would get sick after healings. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. if I didn't physically shower. So what I did is I visualized this light flowing through me and you can do this always because we are all vessels Mm -hmm. for intelligence to move through us and guide others. And so this light is channeling through me. And as I'm helping others or creating space for others, or just being there as a listener for somebody else, because healing doesn't always have to mean Reiki, right? You could yeah. just be oh, listening. Yeah. You could just be listening to your friend. Yeah. And I'm, while I'm doing that, I'm imagining this healing light flowing through my body. And my intention is fill me up, fill mm-hmm. me up as I do this. You have so and, many good techniques. Like I don't do any of this stuff. I'm like, I don't need that. I don't know why I think that I know that I do. Oh, it's, it's a game changer. People it's even ask me, they're changer. like, when you leave the restaurant, do you do anything to like get that energy off of you? I'm like, I don't know. I drive home for 20 minutes by myself without music on. <laughs> like, is that something? I don't, I don't really, I've never been a woo-woo person until I found human design like five-ish years ago. I always thought that that stuff was stupid. And I'm like, everybody yeah. who thinks like, who, who like is into Reiki, numerology, all those things, that's dumb. Like, that's not yep. smart. And then not logical. I was like, wow, that's so mm-hmm. small minded of me when I found human design. And it's like, if you're into this super weird thing, like you got to be cool with everybody else's stuff because this is a <laughs> weird one. So now people can tell me about anything and everything. And I'm like, even if I don't understand it, or if I'm like, whoa, this is a lot. I'm like, cool. I'm here for it. Like, keep talking. Like you're, all of your techniques are awesome. And I probably will take at least one and try it out, but um, I don't know. Have I to tell me really, how it works. I never like think of preparing myself like that ever. Oh, yeah. Like for well, this stuff, I'm just like, plop, here I am. <laughs> yeah. And because I'm a three, I think this is my three. I trial and error stuff. So yeah, I learned stuff from Tony Robbins and then I, at to- a Tony Robbins conference. So I, I was very logical and non woo woo too. Oh, yeah. 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 And then I, you know, I went to Tony you Robbins. Were in corporate America. So you were, yeah. I was like, <laughs> Oh, so, and I grew up in a very conservative Christian church that my family Mm -hmm. was part owner in. So yeah, like I would go to hell if 
I was yeah. talking about this stuff. Like that's how I was raised. Yeah. So very woo woo was was a no no. <laughs> it was a no no. Woo woo was a no no <laughs> for me as well. But it was like self imposed. I was yeah. I was like I got to be smart, and this stuff isn't logical. Yeah. And then as I started, I, I would gravitate towards the things that make sense scientifically, like yoga. There's so many benefits of it that you can talk about. That's like medical and scientific. Great. So I got super into yoga. Same thing with meditation and breath work. You can explain that stuff in a chemical sense. So I was exactly cool it comes in nervous reaching system. out to other, other things that are like I started to get into tarot and I was like, whoa, this has no medical science behind it but this is but it has fun. results but it's it has fun. results and it's really yeah, and crazy it's is because I I I was pulling for myself for a while and I'm not and not very it's not very clear to me because as a projector I don't really see myself very well but when I pull for other people That's I've had nice. the other people tell me like this is amazing my friend she she has me pull for all the time she's like you're so good at this and I'm like I don't know what you're like I'm not doing I'm like reading the cards to you. And she's like, no, your energy. And I was like, all right. So I we are, like we're I mirroring. Like, I can't see that stuff. But then other people tell me, like I used to, I don't do very often anymore, but I used to do full chart readings, which are like two and a half hours long. And they're, I can't do it anymore. Energetically, they were awful. Like, yeah, I love doing it. But when I was done, I was like walking Exhausted. around like a zombie. I didn't know what to do with myself. I couldn't do anything for the rest of the day. So I had to plan them very strategically. And I was like, well, you know, you're charging a good amount for these, but is it enough to like be exhausted like this? And I was like, I don't it, think so. No, but you yeah. should try that technique I'm, because through trial and error, I just tried different protection techniques. And this okay. is the one where I do not feel exhausted. I feel the light comes amped in up. And you say, fill me up. Yep. The whole whole time I'm just thinking I'm being filled up. I'm being energized. I'm being filled up. I'm being energized. Even though I am active listening, that is what's going through my head during that process. Oh, that's so neat. I love that. I don't do as long of readings anymore. My, my stuff is much less shorter and it's much less prep beforehand and energetic energy in here. It's more the other person talking a lot. So that helps. Um, and I don't feel as tired. I really don't want to have my, my, uh, guidance sessions. Now I kind of change things up. I still rely on human design a lot for personalization of the sessions, but mm-hmm. I also rely on my own intuition and my own things that yeah. I, I do. So I agree, freaky, but as a projector, I can't, I can't prepare a speech and then give a speech that's exhausting. I we're really good Reiki masters or what you're doing. Uh, offering channeling messages or spiritual guidance or anything like that is really good for us because we're allowing that light to fill us up and we're receiving light is, is information scientifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're receiving divine information and wisdom that we get to share with the world or our client. Mm -hmm. So channeling information and speaking in that way is it, it does. It fills my cup versus makes me feel exhausted, like writing a speech and giving a speech would yeah, also, yeah. uh, Reiki healing fills me up too. Now that I learned that protection technique, yeah, because that light's moving through my body too. Mm-hmm. that healing. That's light. what my Reiki master friend, Katie told me, she goes, at first it was exhausting, but I've learned to like, it, it helps me too. She's like, where it's a symbiosis. And I was like, Oh my goodness. Cause she's, yeah. she's, I, like I said, I've always been a very logical person. There's very few people I've met in my life that feel like magic and mm-hmm. I couldn't explain it. And before, when I had met them in my life, I'm like, oh, these are just weird people. And now I'm like, oh my God, this is a, and this girl, Katie, when I first met her, I was like, what are you? Like, what is this? I was so <laughs> confused. Cause I couldn't, I was like, you're not, a, you're not a human being. Like, what are you? And she was like, yeah, I am. And so, <laughs> and I had, I was like, and I've met like maybe two other people since then that are like that, but she's the closest person to me that I've met. And anytime I see her, I'm like, what is that? Like, I can't explain what is around, like what is happening when I'm around her and her energy is just something I've never really felt in another person. And so it's really yes. weird. And she was doing, she's a hairdresser. She was doing hair for a really long time. And then she started to get into like 
energy healing and Reiki. I'm like, yes, Katie, this is the thing. <laughs> and now she does like channeling for people and all this kind of intuitive stuff. I'm like, mm. mm-hmm. and her human design chart is like spleen, spleen, spleen. She's a splenic projector. So I was like, Katie, this is your deal, man. Like, this is it. And so now she does, I think she does more energy healing than hair at this point. Mm-hmm. And I was that's very so excited funny. For her. Because many of my students are hairdressers. Our hairdressers are such service oriented souls good and listeners. good listeners, life coaches. Yeah. And they are, they're being called to step into more of a, a healer role, but on the inside versus mm-hmm. the outside. So that's yeah. really. Yeah. Cause it's gotta cool. feel really good to make someone feel good about the way that they look, mm-hmm. but it's gotta feel next level to make someone feel good about the way that they are. With yeah, their energy like that's got to be own level. own their authenticity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's funny that there are a lot of project or a lot of hairdressers. hairdressers. That makes that makes sense because, like you said, they know what it feels to to connect with people energetically, but it's a different like they're behind and they're like even the positioning would make it difficult to connect in the way that maybe they want to now yeah. since they've been practicing it with hair exactly <laughs> yeah like so funny. a lot of them will give scalp reiki now and they'll oh, incorporate so like crystal combs crystal combs mm-hmm. for the hair yeah so that's what they've sure done their clients love that they do i go yeah. to them oh, nice. <laughs> do you know what your kids are and your husband i don't but we need to fix that oh my god you don't okay after this no. we'll, i will look it up for you um well, actually right now, cause I think it will be funny. I want to look up your husband's just cause you guys are still together, right? I'm not like talking. We about are, <laughs> we are still I together. I you are still together, but 10 years this year. Oh, yay. I've been with my husband for 10 years this year, but I, we've been married for seven this year. Oh, we got married so in 2016. Fun. What's his name? Eric, E-R-I-C-K. How did you guys meet? We met, I was in college working for uh, GMR Marketing was the brand name, and we would go to country concerts and I would work in their school tobacco tents and (laughs) he was my event manager at the time. So nepotism. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. But we met in Wisconsin. The next weekend I flew out to a different event. His seat was right next to mine on the plane. And the fact oh, that nice. we were matched on the same event for the second time is pretty miraculous because there's hundreds of employees. Oh, wow. So we were in the same seats next to each other. And that's when he asked me out on a date, 4th of July, 2010. Oh, cute. And I asked him where he was from and he's like, Michigan. I'm like, no way I'm from Michigan. And then we ended up living 30 miles from each other. <gasps> This is so awesome. I love that story. I met my husband on yeah. Tinder three weeks after I moved to Colorado by myself. Um, and we, what? we actually grew up about 30 miles away from each other in California, like in Southern California, <laughs> like this is big divine. state, big state. So our, like, we never ran into each other growing up. Cause he's, he, we just didn't run it. He was far enough away from me that we wouldn't really run into each other. Um, but like when we go back to visit like his parents, I'm like, oh yeah, I know the stuff I've been here. I've been here. And same when he comes to see, he's like, oh, this is where you lived. I was like, yeah, he's like, oh shit. <laughs> so, and he was in Virginia. He had gone to school and then moved with his girlfriend to Colorado. They broke up. He was si- single for a year. And then we matched on Tinder and I've never finally orchestrated in Colorado besides him. He's like the only person. Cause I moved here by myself. Um, 10 years ago, my body was like, Hey, this is, you can't live in California anymore. This is awful. I didn't, I didn't know about human design at the time, but it was my undefined G center saying, you got to get out of here. Yeah. So I did. And you created um, space. I you did. Both and created then I space for each other. <laughs> and then my dogs, I have my whole life that I would never have. Like Otherwise. when I moved here, I was like, okay, you're going to get a job and you're going to make some friends. Let's, let's focus on that thing. And then like three weeks later, I was lonely and I'm like, I would like to go on a date. And so I got on Tinder and I met Sean and we went on some dates and I was like, shit, I really like this guy. And at that time he really liked me too. I'm like, I can't like, can't do this. Like, I can't just jump into this relationship. I just got here, but you happened. sure did. I sure did. It was great. <laughs> and it was worth it. Totally worth it. What's um, his birthday? 
May 3rd, 1986. Do you know when he's born? I should probably, or what time he's born? I should probably ask you this before. I think it's like 8.30 p.m. You said 1986? I know he was born in the afternoon. Yes. 1986? Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can text him to... Oh, you're going to ask him? <laughs> where, do you know where he was born? Toledo, Ohio. Ohio. All right. Well, we'll let him answer you back. But all right, while we're waiting for that, I wanted to ask about, because you run your own business and you're a projector and that is a feat in and of itself. So I kind of it wanted is. to ask you how, like how you do that, how you work it for yourself you know? Yes. Uh, all about creating space. So it's less about what I have to get done and more about creating space in my life. So I have Mm -hmm. to ensure that my environment is, allows me to be very free and I'll wake up every day. I will meditate. And that just allows me to get aligned for the day and I have a very specific technique that I utilize in meditation. I can share my five minute meditation with you if you want to include it in show notes. I don't know how we could do that, but we'll figure it out. We we can (laughs) gift everyone my five minute morning meditation. And one in that meditation, I then ask what my intention for the day should be because I, as a projector, am fully here to guide Mm -hmm. and because we have to wait for the invite, me asking my source energy, unconditional love, my higher self, God, whatever you want to call it, me asking the divine how I can be in service today, whatever I receive as the answer is my invitation. Mm -hmm. That is my permission. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And that is, it becomes my purpose for the day. Oh, nice. And I do that one thing one thing. And if I feel inspired to do other things on my manifestation list, I don't call it a to-do list. I call it a manifestation list or a creation list. Mm -hmm. If I feel inspired to do something on that, I will, if not, I will outsource it. Nice. I like it. You're very like, I'm going to do it this way because I've tried it. Your, your, your third line is very like good, shiny. It's, it's, (laughs) It's hard for me sometimes to, to lean into the third line because I don't want to mess up, but you know, stuff happens. Oh, well, and that's, I don't know. It's part of my three, five. Mm -hmm. So I have to be open to failure. Like I welcome failure because it's how I embody wisdom, which Mm -hmm. takes time and failure. Like wisdom requires failure Mm -hmm. and in the ability to try things. Yeah. And that's how I can teach and guide others from this embodied place of failure. So I'm like, okay, let's try that. That sounds fun. We can fail. And I give mm-hmm. myself permission to fail. Mm. I love that. That's very cool. Um, well, I think I only, I always like to ask like a little, I haven't done it in a while, but I do like to ask like a little fun question at the end. And the one I thought of for you, cause that was when I wrote all my notes, it was really sunny and summery. And it was like, do you have like a favorite summer memory from, uh, from being a kid? Ooh, yes. I remember my grandma and grandpa lived in Plymouth, Indiana on a lake called Lawrence Lake. And I remember going out to Lawrence Lake and driving on the pontoon, jumping on the trampoline, off the trampoline into the lake. That was our thing. And fishing. We did a lot of fishing and we would eat the fish. I remember I could, I remember watching my grandpa do all of the things to make the fish. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I remember seeing mama eggs in the fish. And I thought that I, that like broke my heart that I could see the babies. Uh, but it was my grandpa, uh, was like the most amazing soul. And those are some of my fondest memories of oh, summer. I love that. That's yeah. So great. He had such a big heart. Yeah. That's good. All right. Do we know what time your husband was born or not? Because I can do this for you off. People can be cliffhangered here. Ha ha. I asked him what time he was born and he said, why? He asked. 
And I said, for your human design. You should know this by now. (laughs) I'm just going to ask you. My dad. So we can do this offline. My dad won't give me this information because he thinks like the, if he says it over the phone, like the government's going to like fucking steal his identity or something. I'm like, dad. (laughs) It's your birthday. Yeah, the government already knows they know what this, time you were yeah, born. They have this information. I could find it if I paid for it, but you could just give it to me. And he like what? He's like, maybe I'll write it in a letter. I'm like, dude, you do not need to like telegraph this to my dad. Is so old school, man. He's so afraid that like anything he puts out there. I think I needed a social security number for something one time, and that was a whole ordeal because he didn't want to like say it out loud. Who gave you the social security number, Dad? the government they have it it's theirs they just gave it to you oh it's such a generational thing my mom is the same way she'll put spaces in her passwords because she thinks people are gonna hack her mom's gonna totally listen to this podcast too sorry mom but she puts spaces (laughs) in her passwords and then she forgets them and then she's like what was my password nobody knows (laughs) well to be fair I do that to myself too but I, I do try to, I make my password super basic and my husband's like, Janelle, someone's going to, I'm like, who, who wants to hack me? Like, I don't have anything from these people. What do I want? My podcasts? My Instagram? (laughs) Okay. Right. Who cares? Like if someone tried to like ransom my Instagram back to me, I'd be like, I'm just going to start another one. Like, just leave me alone. (laughs) Like not worth the headache. (laughs) Right. So that's funny. Cause I think about that sometimes too, when people talk about like the gut, like everybody's stealing your stuff. I was like, well, I don't really have anything. Right. I mean, I lost everything in a house fire. I can start a new account. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I like, ain't yeah. scared. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, once your husband believes that we're not trying to steal his identity, I know that's not what he thinks. <laughs> um, we'll get his stuff. Cause it's, I, when you know your husbands and your kids, man, I can't believe you don't know your kids, not to say anything to you, but like, I think you're going to be really stoked when you know your kids. Like that one is really fun. We could do Emery's, my daughter's. Okay. Now I want to do it now because you know hers. Is it start with an E2, E, M, O, R, Y? E, M, E, R, Y. E, R, Y. E, R, Y. And what day was she born? August 2nd, 2016. Oh, I'm excited. Kids are such a, so, so fun to run their charts because nothing, I mean, they're still conditioned a little bit, but not very much at all. So they're really almost like a fresh baked human they are like, they're pure mm-hmm. yeah what time oh goodness 3 56 3 56 p.m 3 56 p.m okay yes i was like you better know this this just happened <laughs> fairly recently okay and were you in lansing michigan at this time yes Okay. So that's where she was born. Oh, I love kids charts. Lansing. There's a lot of Lansings. Let me go down. Got it. So 3.56 PM, August 2nd, 2016, Lansing, Michigan. Okay. Ah, she's a mental projector. She, right? She is not. Yeah, she is. (gasps) She's just like me. She's a mental projector. She's a four, six which is relationships and, and her uh, uh, connections to other people are going to be the things that move her forward in life. So she's going to be really good at relationships. The people that come in her life and bring her stuff, like those are the things she, when she's like, when she's older, she's like, I don't know where I want to live or what school I want to go to. She should ask her people and they'll tell her, and then she should do that. <laughs> so that it's so not hard. like you're relying on other people. It's just that your relationship relationships are really important and they like cosmically move her along and they'll be give her that, momentum. Like, yeah. And people that, like bounce in and out of her life randomly. And when they come in, it's time to pay attention because they're there to give you something from the universe. Mm. Um, they're usually really good at relationships too. They're really good friends. They're really good kids. They're just really good because they know how important a relationship is. Even like a mother daughter relationship, they respect it in a way, you know? Oh yeah. Um, when you're a mental projector child, uh, it's just a lot of, a lot of similar things to regular projectors, but almost heightened. Like it takes us a really long time to make decisions and our authority is kind of 
vague. So we have to do a lot of things to figure out how it goes because we're supposed to talk things out to feel other people's aura, but then our environment is very important, like where we are and where we put ourselves. So it's kind she of- She always a- tells me, mom, you don't give me enough time to decide. Yeah, but she, she needs like days. And I'm yeah. like, honey, you have to, you have to make a decision. <laughs> um, I would maybe practice with stuff that you, she doesn't, is not super important and let her okay. see how long she takes. Like a decision on- I don't know what her what to eat. Is. Yeah. Well, that I get that as a child, it's hard to be like, okay, there's actual time limits to this thing, but maybe <laughs> ask her something like an opinion question, like what's your favorite color, but don't tell me now. What is your favorite book or show, but don't tell me now. Think about it for, I'll come ask you again in a few days and we'll see what you say and see how, ask her, like, how did you figure that out? Like, what did you what was it? Is this your favorite color? Right. When I asked you, or did you see something and you're like, Oh, I like that one. And maybe give her time to like, let something play around in her head. That doesn't have a time limit. I can't think of anything else besides like, that's great stuff that kids like your favorite because book. I, yeah. Cause I understand or your favorite park. I understand what you're meaning. Like when it's like, what do you want for dinner in the morning? You're like, okay, you have, you actually do have to figure this out in your time. Cause it's, I, mean, I don't <laughs> want to starve her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you can give them more, more time that is appropriate in life, but it, she's going to take a lot of time. It's just how she it goes. Is. And she's, she's going to need, very she might have to like put herself in different places, like to yeah. figure stuff out, like physical places. And there might be certain places that she really likes, like environments that make her feel really good and safe and other places that she's like, Oh, I don't like this place. Like physical Mm -hmm. places can really mess with us. It's the people in the places is really what it is, but, um, they affect people affect her so much. And I'm like, honey, you can't let other people. She's really open in the emotional center. All she has is gate 22 unconscious, which is the gate of, um, it's basically called like moodiness. Yeah. It's an energy of just sometimes being in a mood. Like they're either in the mood or not in the mood to do certain things. And when they're in the mood, they're very graceful and they're very personable and they're very, like, very charming and people are really into them. But when they're not in the mood, they're not in the mood. (laughs) And it's like, that is no joke. (laughs) It's like a real, but their moods aren't like crazy. Like my sister, when we were growing up, she had a temper and she like Mm -hmm. broke things and like yeah not shit. That. yeah no this is a lower frequent this is lower this is just like like moodiness like when you're an adult and you're like mm, I'm in a bad mood like that kind yeah. of thing but as a child there's really no like the reasons behind it can be a myriad of things you know um yeah. but yeah it just it's when it's an emotional thing it's like a wave they just kind of have to ride it out and certain things can help move it along they just have to figure out what those things are. Um, mm. She has a completely open heart, which you do as well. And that's when we talked about before how you have this ability to really hold space for people in the intuitive, when it comes to intuition, you also have a lot of energy to hold space for people when it comes to self-worth and mm. and like self-esteem. Yeah. And because the heart, that's what the heart is. The heart is wants to prove itself to people, wants to show how good it is at, at everything so that it will get love and, and attention. And when you have a completely open heart, like you do, you can really learn to hold the space for people who have really big problems with self-esteem or really don't love themselves. Like you really have the strength to hold space for that. And so does she, um, yes. she's going to have to learn it, but <laughs> it's, you already started it. You have started it off. You started it off like way up here. So, um, yeah, that's cool that she's a mental projector and she's going to be in here a lot, like a lot So much over analyze over everything, like worry, worry, worry. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Especially when you're a kid, I was a big worry war as a child. I worried about everything. My mom used to tell me, you're not the mom. You're not the mom. She is the mom. Because I'm like, I'm worried about is the mom and money and food and this, and how are we going to do this? And you guys are fighting and now what's happening. I grew up in a, I'm sure a much less stable, 
my parents were alcoholics. So I had like a lot of shit going on. It sounds like you have a much better foundation for her, but she's still, like you said, going to have this inner, like I have to take care of things. It's almost like an inner responsibility um, that is like, hey, I have to do it. Like I, I'm the one that's going to do all the stuff to make sure everybody's okay. And it yep. comes from up here. She's going to, she's going to, she may or may not have anxiety, but if, if, if it mm-hmm. happens, it's going to be from here. Cause in human design, you can get anxiety here in the head and then down in the root, which is like the energy to go. And that energy can really push you to overwork yourself and to burn yourself out. But this energy is, is anxiety of the mind. Yes, is that is her. Never ending thoughts and spiraling down and worrying about stuff that's not important the the head center is worrying about things that don't matter so and she has a very defined head so she's probably gonna be real strong in the worrying about things that don't matter yeah she got the leadership award at school because (laughs) she made sure everyone was doing what they were supposed to be doing that's so that's I love when you say shit like this because it's like she's a kid so she doesn't nothing has conditioned her yet this is how it's so cool um it's just but how yeah. she's wired. Yeah. You, all the stuff you're, help, you're, you're showing her is going to, is really going to help her with a lot of this. She's still going to have anxiety and she's still going to worry about things that don't matter, but you can help her. You can, right. this is what I do. Cause I, this happens to me often is I have to go, okay, what's in my head. Okay. What can I do anything about? I have to get very logical about it and then I can prioritize and then things just kind of move away. And I feel like I've created space, just like you said, I've created space up here. It's about mm-hmm. creating space in the body. So you don't feel so like, wow, because, because you're jam, you're trying to fit so much into the brain. You're trying to fit everybody's emotions in here. You're trying to fit all the stuff. How do I prove myself to these people? And when you make space, when you clear out all the stuff and make space in here, it, it works real well with the space that you can create on the outside as well. You're speaking to my soul. Oh, yeah. I love, <laughs> oh, I love your daughter's chart. This is so neat that she's a projector. I wonder what the other one is. Okay. So I'll send you this too. Um, Thank and you. I'll tell you where I go to get my charts because it's free and you can just enter a million different, you could just charts all day. If you have, the I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Look up your well, friends, like look up all the people that you spend a lot of time with because you're a projector and you're mm-hmm. taking in a lot of stuff from these people, but you're also really have, it's, we have a penetrating aura. So we really see into people and sometimes they don't care for it. And it's a lot, mm-hmm. we can come yeah. off as a lot without doing anything because our energy just, just by being, like, yeah. People are like, Whoa, what are you doing? And you just said, hi or something. And a lot of the time it has to do with our eyes. Like people will tell me, like, if I look at them, they're like, Hey, what are you like? What's going on? I'm like, nothing. I just have eyes, but we really, let me put my sunglasses on. Right. We (laughs) really can get into people energetically, like just without trying or doing anything. So when you know your other people's types, you can be like, Oh, okay. Like projector to projector is a little bit easier because we know we, we know the feeling other. we're like, yeah, well, we know, I know that you have a penetrating aura. I know that you're going to say some stuff that's going to make me be like, whoa, oh, cool. Me. Like I already know <laughs> these things, but other people are going to be like, what is she saying? Like she's looking right at my soul. Oh no. And it can be hard for people because it's very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason too, that we are supposed to wait for the invitation and not just freely give out advice is because we hit too close to home. Yeah. And if someone is not ready then they, they will have all resist. sorts of reactions to what you said. And I've done this before. And usually when I do this and get a bad reaction, days, even weeks will pass. And that person will come back to me and be like, Hey, that thing you said that I got really pissed off about, can you say it again? <laughs> and then we talk <laughs> about it, but they were, they were, they're scared. They didn't want to deal with it. I have so much shit that I don't want to deal with that I avoid. So I get it when I have like, say something to people and they're like, Whoa, that's too much. And so I'm like, okay, come back later. When you're ready. I'll you know. be here. And I am very direct sometimes. That's I have good. found. You are a direct and person. That, that also, yeah, can rub people the wrong way sometimes. Yeah, but like, 
you're direct in a way that's very open, like the way that you speak. I, I think it's from New Orleans podcast. I really listen to the way that people speak, the tone of their voice, the words that they choose and like when they pause and how you're very authoritative in your speech. Just like you said, you're like, okay, I do this. This is this. I've tried this. This works for me. And, but it doesn't come from a place of like, I know better than you. It comes from a place of, Hey, I'm opening up myself to you. I would like to share this with you. If you'd like this information, great. If not, cool. It's cool. But it will really it's just my help experience. You now. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a lot of throat energy. And I think that's part of the reason why you're very like, here you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have, I have this as well. You have the, the 23 to the 43, which is like the free to genius channel. You just have the 23 part, which is like speaking without knowing where it's coming from. Like you get stuff, but you have no idea where it's coming from. And so you just say some things sometimes and people are like, what the hell is that? Like, where did you get that? That's weird. But you're supposed to have, I love that. Speak these things out. And it comes from my heart. So you can tell when you talk, like you have the tone of your voice is like very, it comes, I can tell it comes from like, you've thought about these things. You're not just talking. You just, you choose your words and you choose your tone because you know how important it is. What you have to say is important. And mm-hmm. so you want people to know. Yes. And when you choose your tone and you choose your words and you speak with authority, it's, that's what it comes across to me is you're like, I, I want you to know this, but I'm never, but I'm not going to be like, you have to do this. Oh. Right. And I think a lot of projectors have throat imbalances. I know this has been one of my biggest obstacles as a child. I never, I peed my pants if I was going to speak in public. Oh, I, I would almost got held school. back in first grade because I would not talk. I had See? no, I wouldn't speak to people. I was no. so terribly shy. Because I was terrified, shy. terrified of hurting somebody's feelings or being judged. Rocking the boat in any way with this yep. thing. So I'm just going to quiet, go along with everybody's stuff. Very people pleasery that me, same, very much the same. same. And we're like <laughs> this. And it's funny that we're here to use our voice. Like the very thing yeah. that we're so scared of is exactly why we are here. Dude, when I learned that, I was like, no, nah. I was like, that's not cool. Like, I don't have anything important to say. This is before I started all the podcast and stuff. I was like, I don't have anything. The way I talk is weird. Nobody's going to like, what? But I went through a, a mentorship program and my mentor really helped me with the throat and then my undefined G center, yours is defined, but my undefined G center, she really helped me with that stuff. And I, now I can't shut up. <laughs> now I feel like I talk a lot, like a lot. I <laughs> love it. Sometimes I'm like, why are you still talking? <laughs> but before, <laughs> like you said, it's, it's so crazy. Cause I was exact. I was very much the same, like, just be quiet. And my sister was like, well, she was all over the place and loud and just very demonstrative. And it's funny because I look at her chart. I'm like, Monica, this is because you're, she's a projector too, but she's an emotional projector. And she has other things in her chart that make her very like, Ooh. Mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, we are both projectors, but you just had a lot more like, almost like confidence of like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and I was scared of like, oh God, if I do this, this could happen. And well, if I say this, oh, and it really gave me a lot of anxiety. That's where a lot of my anxiety stemmed from was Mm. worrying about things that don't matter in life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And now being the mom (laughs) and being the mom and because you're in your, in your mind a lot, right. You almost Mm -hmm. feel like, I think, I think, I think this is a societal programming, but we feel like we need to speak from the mind. When I started yeah. shifting from speaking from the mind to the heart and knowing that it could come out messy and giving myself permission for my words to be messy, it mm-hmm. doesn't even need to make sense. As long mm-hmm. as it's coming from my heart, it's this vibration of love. And I know that it's divine. So I'm hoping that everyone listening, if you're afraid of using your voice, just start speaking with your heart versus your mind, which is what I did. And know that it can be messy. It doesn't even need to make sense. You're still getting your point across. Yeah. And it sounds so much more genuine and real when you speak from that place. And in human design, the mind is not the place where you make decisions. It does Mm -hmm. stuff, but it's not involved in your choices. It's it's really 
care for other things. And you're, like you said, you're really supposed to focus on the body rather than the mind when it comes to really anything in, in human design, um, which can be very difficult for our mental projectors because we are only defined up here. So yes. you're already teaching her this, but it's really good for mental projector kids to learn how to feel stuff in their body. Cause mm. I, I, as a child, I have, I don't know what that would have, that sounds in, like so alien to me to think about here because I, I was, I was here, I was always here. And this was like, oh, my stomach hurts because I have anxiety. That sucks. But I never like really was like, well, why? Like what's yeah. going on in here? What's going on? Like in your heart, why are you having a hard time breathing? Like what? I just was like, no, it's this. And that was that. But my really- microphone is sitting on this book called messages from the body, which <laughs> it could not be more divine. That's so funny. Um, and it tells that. you based on what you're holding on to in your body, what you're feeling in your body, the emotional message behind it. And it's yeah. from, it's who is this? Michael J. Lincoln. He's a, has a PhD. So a very reputable book. And I always tell my daughter, you, when your stomach growls, you're hungry right? Oh. And we feed it, we nourish it. Mm-hmm. And your emotions growl because they do. Her emotions do growl. <laughs> <laughs> we have to nourish them, feed them. And we love do that, that through meditation and love and love so the much. process of transmutation, which I teach in Reiki. So yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's just, you know, we can't see our emotions. We just feel our emotions. So they're, they're not as tangible and we're just hard not trust. trust stuff. Yeah. It's hard to trust things that you can't see. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. It's like you said, we're not taught that's the stuff growing up at all. Um, no. And a lot of times growing up, I was told that my emotions were lying to, like they were making stuff up and lying to me, but that's this, this is the mind is the thing that tells you stories and makes things not that are not real. And just this pays attention to what's real. And this is just kind of all over the place. And this would tell me your emotions are lying, making things up. They're lying to you. Don't pay attention. They're not real. Yeah. And I had to like go it's against my mind. Your mind can be real tricky. Tricky. And, and if you have listened to it your whole life, it's very unconscious to be like, oh yeah, you're right. And you actually have to like work on listening to this stuff. It takes like effort. <laughs> It does. It takes meditation. Don't realize is we don't just say that we're listening to our bodies and then we're like, oh, we're listening to our bodies. That works. And no, you actually have to like try to do it. Like it takes an effort from you. And that when you start, you're gonna be like, this feels super weird and uncomfortable, and I don't like this. Like, ah, ugh, this is gross. Start with short periods of time, make them longer, and it gets really comfortable to the point where if I didn't meditate, I would like wait what's going on today? I have to meditate first. <laughs> like what have is to. happening? Have to. Um, yeah. And- One thing I started doing was journaling. So I would journal every morning before meditation, mm-hmm. how my thoughts, I would bring awareness to my thoughts, even if it was for like two minutes. Oh, that thought is weird and outlandish. It could be you, when you start bringing awareness to your thoughts, you're going to be like, what am I creating up right. in here? So right. I would just write down the most outlandish stuff that came through. And then a thought creates an emotion and I would write the emotion down. And then an emotion creates a feeling that feeling creates our physical reality through our actions and our reactions. So that's the process of manifestation. And it starts in the mind at the thought. So it's so important for us to know that we can shift our thoughts and we can control our thoughts in that way. Yeah. I love that Mm -hmm. so much. I loved having you on. You've shared so many things with me that we've like touched on that I feel like you should probably come on again and talk about some of this stuff more in depth because you're really fun to talk to also. Um, so I would love to. Thank you again for sharing all this stuff with us because I, like I said, I sometimes get stuck in a box with the, my self healing things. And I'm like, okay, I check this off the list. I don't really try new things, but I'm going to try this stuff, especially the light and giving me energy and filling me up. Cause I think that will really help me. So Remind us again where we can find you. It'll be in the notes, but I like you to yeah. say it. <laughs> I, you can find me on Instagram at energy with Allie, A-L-L-I-E. So Instagram at energy with Allie is my handle. And I'm 
pretty much only there. I do go live most Mondays at 12 PM Eastern standard time. And I do a meditation because I meditate every day. So I'm like, you guys can come hang out with me while I meditate. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, cool. Well, I'll probably join you then because that will be fun. So thanks y'all for listening and we will catch you later. Bye.